everything that is happening in your life is on purpose for a purpose as long as you are walking with god and waiting on god if i may ask the question what is the right way to wait on god or wait for god even when i am down I will find a new strength because I am depending and trusting in God. And this is to encourage you that as long as God has promised you something and has a purpose for your life, it's going to come true. Yeah, it might take some time. You you don't know the details. You don't know when or how long it's going to happen, but you have to believe it. All we need to do is to wait for him. And we do not have details. We do not have the timing. When is it going to come true? But we sure should know that it will definitely come true. When I think about waiting on God, it is like this journey that I do not have details. I'm not in control. I do not know exactly when things are going to turn. It really needs me to live a life of faith. The scripture says that the just shall live by faith. Now, the first thing about waiting on God is for you to know that we are not in control. You and I do not call the shots on the timing, on when things are going to change, on the promises of God, when they are going to be fulfilled. But we have a part to play, which we need to do our part. But God calls the shot. If I may ask the question, what is the right way to wait on God or wait for God? I would say this, that the right way is not to be passive, but to be active in waiting. Because waiting on God is not an activity of being passive like, God, I've handed over my problems, my life, my future into your hands. So let me go sit down somewhere, cross my legs, and then do what you want to do. Or maybe you come into a place that you are really, really tired and you're like, if God wants to bless me, he will. If he does not want to bless me, I'm done. Like I've tried my best. I've tried all I could. And that's all I could offer. It's not that place. So scriptures in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Now, a little bit of looking into the scripture, the quality of the eagle is that for the eagle to be able to sow or lift up its wings to mount it's because there is a current of air that it has to wait for and when that current of air is being stirred it now runs into that air and then allows that wind to carry it so it means it conserves its own strength and do not have to work on its own effort, but allows the current of that wind to carry it. So when it comes to waiting on God, it is this idea that God is the one who can help us. God is the one who has purposed us, who has a purpose for our life, and he has the timing, is in control, is in charge, he calls the shot. All we need to do is to wait for him, and we do not have details, we do not have the timing, when is it going to come true, but we sure should know that it will definitely come true. So when it comes to actively waiting on God, this is what you need to know, that waiting for the Lord does not mean that it will pull you from your trouble, but it will take you through it. So waiting for the Lord, according to the scripture, it says that the reward for waiting is a renewed strength. A changed strength it doesn't mean that because you're waiting on the lord or for the lord that god will pull you out of the situation god will pull you out of your trouble everything you're experiencing is going to stop immediately everything you've ever gone through god is going to help you and everything will become perfect that is not the promise the promise is that when you wait your strength will be renewed so it means if you are waiting and you are getting tired and you are getting weary, you are being passive in your waiting. Point number three is waiting on God means you won't lose touch of his presence. If you lose touch of the presence of God in the idea that I've waited on God for this, I've waited on God for a husband, I've waited on God for this job, I've waited on God for a baby, and I've not seen it come through, so now I don't think I can wait again, I don't think I can wait for God. 
I think I need to go do it my own way. I think I need to find another option. It is Samuel telling Saul, the king in Israel, in First Samuel, wait for me. I'm coming to do a sacrifice. But because the war was coming and the people were anxious, Saul became so anxious that he couldn't wait again. He had to go sacrifice and that wasn't his duty. And most of the time, it shows our passivity because waiting on God is, a be, is about knowing that if I don't have what I'm waiting for, I have his presence. And if I have his presence, if I have the Holy Spirit in me, that is enough. I know that my future is assured. That should be your confidence. Number four, if you're waiting on God, your strength will change. You will become stronger, not weaker. I have mentioned that before. For you to wait on God and know that you are waiting, it means as you're waiting, when adversity hits you, it's not going to make you become weaker. When adversity comes to you, it's not going to bring you to a place that you are giving up. You are like, oh, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to trust God again. I don't want a husband again. Of course, God do not want you in any way to idolize anything that he wants to give to you. He said, I have no other God beside me so if you're idolizing marriage and you're desperate for it you may not get it because you are having an idol or whatever thing you are seeking whether it's a job and you're idolizing that job maybe that is the reason you're not getting it at the time you're looking for it you just need to hold yourself back and say okay god is my priority god is my focus because you're not waiting for god to give you something you're waiting for god to show up with whatever he has for you and this is beautiful. You're not waiting for God to bring something that you desire, your ambitions to you. You're literally waiting for him to show up in your life with the purpose and the plan he has for you. And you need to hold this close to your heart and know that as you're waiting, that is where God changes your strength. He gives you a new strength in each season because we live life in seasons and as you approach a new season god gives you a new measure of strength based on what you are facing or what is ahead of you and he says you are capable you can do this i am with you through this paul apostle in philippians came to a place that he said i am content in every situation whether i have much or i have nothing i am content i have learned this and it took him joining to learn that. And we have to come to a place that we are learning that every adversity that he, every adversity that hits us is only going to make us stronger, is only going to make our faith deepened, it's only going to make us run to God and encourage ourselves in the Lord. You can read first Samuel chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. When David went to war, he but came back home, they had taken away their family, their wives, and their children. The men were distressed and depressed. They wanted to stone David. And David encouraged himself in the Lord, waited on God, asked of God, should I pursue? So it is the place of knowing, even when I am down, I will find a new strength because I am depending and trusting in God. Scriptures in Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, if you fail or faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small, which means when you fail because things are hard, you are not waiting actively, but you are passive in your waiting because your strength should be renewed. If you're really looking to God. Number five, waiting on God does not mean inactivity, but means you keep living and doing your best, knowing that the scripture says that God daily loads us with benefits, that God has a lot for you. And scripture says, give us our daily bread, that every day you wake up, you are going to God, give me my daily bread. You wake up with joy, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice in everything. Bring your request to God with thanksgiving and the peace of God will guard your heart. Knowing that every day that you wake up, you are looking to God. God is your source. God is the one who will take you through that day. God is the one who will take you through the adversity or the problem or the situation. Whether in joy or in pain, God should be your all in all. That is actively waiting on God. It is not an, a place of inactivity of saying, God, I've already prayed about this. So 
I'm not even going to dare ask again. I'm just going to wait until you do this. If you're not going to do this, then I'm not going to pray again. If you're not going to do this, now you start giving God conditions. <laughs> God, if you're not going to help me, if you're not going to come through, I will not sing again. I will not pray again. And like, you're not doing God a favor by praying. You're not doing God a favor by singing. So you cannot threaten God because you're putting up traits. God, if you don't do this for me, I've saved you all my life. Now you are becoming entitled and you are legalistic at this point because you feel like you deserve the goodness of God. You do not. It is based on his grace, his unmerited favor. You receive it because he gave it freely. Number six, why are you waiting on God? It doesn't mean you should be self-absorbed, but Christ focused. God focused. God word. Like you're not consumed in yourself because by the time you start thinking about all your troubles, all your problems, and all the negativity around you, you are going to be consumed in that place. And the devil can win. Because at that point, the devil will build a stronghold of negativity over your mind, around your perspective and belief about God. Oh, I told you God's not going to come through. You know, this is an option. Try this, try that. And God is saying, when you're waiting, don't be so focused on yourself. Be focused on me. Your eyes looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That is where your eyes should be. And then... When I read Genesis about the story of Joseph, I could really relate with Joseph as much as I'm not in prison or I've not experienced what he has experienced, but I have my own situation. You know, I was listening to this song by Elevation Worship and they said, I'm calling on the God of David. And then when I wanted to sing that song, I said, I'm calling on the God of Joseph who made a servant boy prosperous. Because even in the house where he was a slave, God made him prosperous because the favor of God was on him. Even in prison, because the presence and the favor of God was with him, Joseph was prosperous in the prison and God favored him and the prison, the, the, the keeper of the prison favored him too because the favor of God was on him. And this came overall to show up in his attitude. That he was not focused on himself. He had a lot to be bitter about. He had a lot to complain about. But this is Joseph staying with these two guys, Pharaoh's Cobbera and Baker. And these guys had a dream, woke up feeling sad. And Joseph could notice them that they are sad. You when you are focused on yourself, you would not notice what is happening around you. You would not even notice that other people are going through a lot too. Because you're too focused on yourself, you feel like it's all about you. And when you're waiting on God, your focus shouldn't be on you, but on God. In fact, that might be the time that God is asking you to bless someone. That might be the time that God is calling on you to be of good to someone, to put a smile on somebody's face. And Joseph was there to do that. Now, let me just read the last part of that verse of Joseph talking to those guys. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? He asked them. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business. Joseph replied, go ahead and tell me your dreams. Joseph could be there for them because he was not self-absorbed and self-focused, but God-focused. It wasn't bitter upon all the things that happened to him. So, the next point is that while you're waiting, don't stop seeking for opportunities. I want you to go ahead, read the story of Joseph. I read it through. It is very beautiful. It is so beautiful. It is. There's a lot to learn about it. Now, when you're waiting, you don't stop looking for opportunities. The Bible says in Proverbs that it is for a man to plan his way and God will direct his steps, which is, God is saying, when you're waiting on me, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have plans. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have goals. That doesn't mean that you should empty your mind. Never think for yourself again. Joseph was here, after interpreting the dream for the chief cup bearer, he said to him, and please remember me, and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh, so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did 
nothing to deserve it. He was still seeking for opportunity to move forward. So when you're waiting on God, everything you're doing, you're not going against the will of God to do anything to seek for opportunities, but in line with the will of God, it is to tell you, you are not becoming passive. You are still actively moving forward with life, actively dreaming, actively having goals. Number eight, when you feel forgotten, don't forget that God is doing something greater as you're waiting. When you feel like you've been forgotten, you've been laid down, don't forget that God is doing something great. Maybe you were waiting on God, hoping that someone you help was going to come around to help you like Joseph. Interpreted dream for the chief cup bearer and the guy completely forgot about him. That did not make Joseph become bitter. Instead, he knew that God is with him. And everything that is happening in his life is happening on purpose, for a purpose. And that is beautiful to know that everything that is happening in your life is on purpose, for a purpose, as long as you are walking with God and waiting on God. And that scripture that says that everything works together for good, it applies to those who are actively waiting on God. Number nine, while waiting on God, keep rehearsing his promises. Keep rehearsing God's promises. What did God promise you in his word? Now, in Joseph's case here, Joseph knew that God was with him. He had a dream when he was a young boy, and then he kept believing God. He kept working with God. He kept practicing the presence of God. And when the time came that God changed the story, this is what he said to his brothers who threw him into the prison. Don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. And this is to encourage you that as long as God has promised you something and has a purpose for your life, it's going to come true. Yeah, it might take some time. You, you don't know the details. You don't know when or how long it's going to happen, but you have to believe it. The last point, which is number 10, is while waiting on God, reposition your perspective of God. See yourself where God is taking you. See yourself becoming what God has planned for you. The dreams that God has placed in your heart, see yourself there already because you have to see here before you can see with your physical eyes. David said in Psalms 27, I'm sure now I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. I'm using the message translation here. But he's saying, I would have lost and I would have given up if I did not believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So it's for you to know my perspective is that I am already where God wants me to be. And I am seeing myself already in the future that God has prepared for me. I am not in a place that I'm backing down thinking that all these things God has promised is just empty promises. No, they are not. God has beautiful promises for you. And they are going to come true. See yourself walking in the reality of what God has promised you. And this is you believing in faith that everything God has promised you will come to pass. And I hope that this video and this point is going to help you in your waiting on God. And as you're walking, so that you wait on God actively, not passively. And keep living life and not quit. Knowing that everything God has for you, every single one of it will come to pass in jesus name amen i am uwem this is my youtube channel if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please should i beg <laughs> okay i already did so hit the subscribe button the red button there is free of charge and hit the like button share this video to someone who needs this encouragement that waiting on god actually will lead into a place of strength or lead her to a place of strength where they will get to sow and not be weary and not be tired. Amen. Bye-bye.